In this video, I'm going to talk about the single slit modulation of the double slit interference pattern. It is part of topic 9.3 in the IBHL physics syllabus. Please take a moment to read the success criteria for this video. Okay, so let's take a look at, first of all, this um, pattern here in, this in the center. It's showing us the double slit interference pattern. And over on the right, you can see it's with two very thin slits compared to the distance between them. We know that the intensity of these fringes is fairly constant and then eventually um, dies out as we go farther and farther away. And we also see that the spacing in between the fringes is equal. And we have an equation that we use, S is lambda big D over little d, to um, calculate that for the maxima. Now down below is a single slit pattern. And if you remember, we have an equation theta equals lambda over b, theta being in radians, but that is also for the angle to the first minima, and that would be this one. Okay, so here's the center, this would be theta equals zero, and I would use my equation to find this part right here. Now, the interesting thing comes when we have slits that are fatter than um, what we've got here in two. So if we take a look at number one, these are slits which are much, much larger. And now we start to be able to compare the width of the slit compared to the distance between them. And what happens, you can see in the pattern, is we can see all these little maxima here, just like we would have had down below um, with just the double slit interference. But now we also have a changing in the overall maxima minima intensity that actually is coming from the fact that we have single slit modulation. So what that means is we have our double slit interference, but the fact that the slits have their own finite width means they are also adding to the total interference package. So let's take a look at a graph. So we have intensity on the y and angle on the x. So what we're trying to show here is, you can see our double slit interference. Here we are here. And we come to this spot right here where we don't see our double slit interference occurring. For some reason, this fringe is missing. Well, what's happened is, if we take a look at the same thing, if we had one single um, slit, that's where our first minimum would have occurred. If I put this single slit intensity graph over top of what I would have had for my double slit intensity, you can see that it envelops or acts like a barrier around the double slit intensity. Now, the number of fringes that we're actually going to see before we have one disappearing, that's going to be due to our double slit interference. So our S equals lambda over D depends on where we have our um, peaks. But this one here, where we have our one disappearing, that's due to our single slit diffraction. Okay, so let's try an example. We have monochromatic light, that means a single wavelength. It's at 5.8 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, so 580 nanometers, passing through two slits. Now they are 0 0.032 millimeters wide, and they are 0.27 millimeters apart. So that means our B value is equal to 0 0.032 millimeters and our d value little d is 0 0.27 millimeters 
Now, we're asked to say why the eighth and ninth fringes will not be visible. So if we're talking about that, then we need to look at theta is lambda over b. This will tell us where we should, or at what angle, we should have our first um, minima due to the single slit interference. And I get a value of 0 0.0181 radians. Don't forget, with these kind of questions, you need to make sure you put them into the same units. And for ease, I always put them into just using meters. Now, okay, so that's the angle at which the single slit is probably going to give us our first minimum. But if we're going to talk about the fringes that came from our double slit interference, if you remember, we're getting them because we've got the one ray traveling a multiple of lambda farther than the other one. And when we drew it like this, for example, here's our screen. Um, we talked about the bottom one traveling farther than the top. And it would have to have traveled d sine theta. And we measured theta right here. Now, for constructive interference from my double slit interference, then this would have been equal to lambda. And now, if I want the first point, I would have just lambda. If I wanted the second one, I'd have um, two lambda and so forth. And so I'm going to write this j as just an n for now. So what I'd like to find is what value of n do I get when I put my theta of 0 0.0181 radians into this equation. Let me go ahead and do that and find out. Now, when I put it in my calculator, and don't forget, this has to have your sign in radians, so double check your calculator. In HL physics, there'll be lots of times where you're given something in degrees or radians on the same test. So you just have to be able to do it on your calculator and um, double check every single time you use any trigonometri trigonometric function. Now when I put it in my calculator, I get it n equals 8.4. Now remember in our diagram of intensity for the single slit, um, we have our central maximum here. This one is definitely less than 20%, much less actually, um, and they get less and less as we go through. By the time we get to this one, and 8 is going to be very small. Now the actual disappearance is going to be happening um, at 8.4 but that means our fringe at 8 and 9 are just going to be on either side of that minima and that's why they're probably not going to be visible. And let's double check the wording of the question. It says show why the center pattern will not be clearly visible. So because they're both around where our first minima will occur, they will be very difficult to see. They will have extremely low intensity. Don't forget to always go back and check the question to say, what is it really asking me to talk about? Well, I hope that helps you out. And I hope you can go back to those success criteria and say, yes, now I can talk about how the single slit can modulate my double slit interference if it's appropriately wide. Thank you.